Hi, please speak a story. Once upon a time, in a small village by the sea, there lived an adventurous fisherman named Elias. Every morning, he would set out in his small boat, navigating the waves in search of the perfect catch. Great, great. One day, speak another one. Bustling city filled with towering skyscrapers and bustling streets. There was a young artist named Maya. Every day, she wandered the city, capturing the vibrant energy of okay, urban life thank you. through her sketches. One day, while sitting in a busy park, okay, that's Maya, nice. Glad you enjoyed it. If you have any more requests or need another story, feel free to ask. Hello, everyone. I'm Frank Fu. The video just now showcased a scene of conversing with a NavTalker real-time digital human, and the effect was outstanding. The digital human image we used was generated through text-to-image technology, which means uh, we can create virtual images freely and without limitations based on our needs. Of course, we also support combining real MP4 videos with digital humans to further enhance the interactive experience. Today I'd like to talk about a key issue in building digital human systems, how to create a, a true sense of presence. Whether it's a virtual host, an AI tour guide, or a customer service agent, users now expect more than simple outputs. They want natural, seamless, real-time interaction. To achieve this real-time feel, I believe the system must solve two fundamental challenges, precise audio-video synchronization and the reliable, stable connectivity. In my own projects, I've focused on both aspects, using WebRTC to implement frame-level media control and optimizing WebSocket handling under high concurrency. Let me share my approach and the solutions I've developed I found that achieving natural AV synchronization is far more complex than it seems. Audio is typically high frequency and the low latency, pushing small PCM chunks every 20 milliseconds. A video, by contrast, consists of large frames at about 30 per second, which places a higher demand on processing and network resources. Because audio and video use different sampling rates and time units, I had to unify the timing logic. I used Python's time monotonic as the global reference and built custom audio stream track and video stream track classes to control media delivery separately. Here's how it works. The audio track pushes one PCM block every 20 ms and calculates timestamps using sample counts. The video track pushes frames at the target frame rate and assigns each one a timestamp in the 90 kHz units. I ran both streams as asynchronous tasks. They operate independently but share the same start time. This gave me precise frame level alignment, which significantly improved the natural feel of the digital human's expression. Beyond synchronization, I face a more subtle challenge, connection stability. In real-time systems, WebSocket is a core communication layer, but I observed that under frequent connection, disconnection, TCP's time wait state would accumulate rapidly, exhausting available ports and causing failures. Time wait is meant to protect against interference from old sessions but when the client keeps reconnecting, it becomes a resource bottleneck. To address this, I optimized the system on two levels. At the system level, I enabled the port reuse, TCP the deep reuse or number one, reduced the time wait duration, and activated TCP cap and live. In socket programming, I used the so reuse adder and so reuse port to allow fast port reuse and multi-process sharing. These adjustments helped me maintain system stability under a heavy load, preventing downtime caused by port exhaustion. In my view, the sense of real-time presence is not just a matter of 
user perception. It reflects the underlying strengths of system engineering. Audio-video synchronization ensures natural and trustworthy interaction. Connection management determines whether the system can operate reliably in real-world environments. Building a digital human system goes far beyond uh, models. It involves media scheduling, protocol design, and fault tolerance at multiple layers. Only with a stable system can users place their trust in the experience. This is how I understand the foundation of real-time AI systems, and I hope my experience offers some inspiration for your work as well. Thank you for watching this episode. If you're interested in digital humans, real-time media systems, or AI infrastructure, feel free to leave a comment and share your thoughts. See you in the next video.